This is the Hiking Through Life podcast. We've all been gifted a journey called life. Let's see where the journey leads us today. All aspects of our lives are connected, and in order to reach your full potential, we need to look at all those aspects. I know when I don't get physical activity in my day, whether it be a hike, yoga, or a little weightlifting, I feel off, and that directly affects my mental health. Shape and Foster is a lifestyle development app that provides monthly actionable insights from six experts in mental health, financial planning, nutrition, fitness, yoga, and a life coach. Shape and Foster is a one-stop shop for self-improvement. The app provides a proactive and informed approach to improving your mental well-being by enabling practices and habits to be built. As the new year rolls in, giving yourself the gift of a healthy lifestyle is one that is truly priceless. Visit shapeandfoster.com for your 14-day free trial. We're looking forward to getting Rory out for his first winter adventures. We're super excited that we recently got Ella's wool to keep him warm this winter. The merino wool is super warm, moisture wicking, and I feel really confident that he's going to be super warm and dry this winter on all of our adventures. If you want to try out Ella's wool, you can use the code HIKINGTHROUGHLIFE2020 to get 10% off your order. That's Hiking Through Life 2020. You can go over to ellaswool.com to look for their super cute outfits. They have onesies, they have tubes, they have hats, they have all the wool products you need to keep your baby warm. Check them out. Welcome to the Hiking Through Life podcast, where we talk with people who in some way, shape, or form have been influenced by the outdoors. I'm Andy, the producer of this podcast, and my lovely wife, Sarah, will be your host. Together, we make up Hiking Through Life. This podcast is all about bringing all kinds of people who are inspired by the outdoors and sharing their stories. We hope that by sharing people's stories, it inspires others to get out and live a more meaningful life. Tune in every week for new episodes, or better yet, subscribe to the Hiking Through Life podcast on your favorite podcast provider. If you enjoy this podcast, please share it with others. Also, if you have a story to share or know of anyone who might be interested in being a guest on this podcast, head on over to hikingthroughlife.net slash podcast and get in touch with us. If you'd like to support Hiking Through Life, you can go to hikingthroughlife.net slash shop. We have t-shirts, water bottles, and we recently added stickers to the shop. Use the code podcast at checkout and receive 10% off your first order. There are other ways you can support this podcast as well. You can check those out at hikingthroughlife.net slash support. Also, be sure to sign up for our email list. You can do that by heading over to hikingthroughlife.net. Enter your email address and click subscribe. There's no commitment. You can unsubscribe at any time. As part of our email list, you'll receive our monthly newsletter. We'll also be sending out any promotional codes for Hiking Through Life gear. It's an excellent way to follow Hiking Through Life's journey. Now sit back and enjoy this week's episode. Welcome to the Hiking Through Life podcast. Today we are joined by Callum. Callum is an entrepreneur who sees the value of a healthy lifestyle. It's crucial to look at all aspects of a person's life when trying to reach their full potential, and that is exactly what Callum's latest business, Shape and Foster, is doing. Shape and Foster is a community platform launching in January, and it's on a mission to help improve a person's overall lifestyle. Welcome to the podcast, Callum. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Sarah um, and Rory. Uh, you're joined by Rory as well. Uh, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> yes, we're joined by Rory, my podcast assistant here. <laughs> so we hope that there's not a lot of background noise. <laughs> So Callum, tell us about like, how did a healthy lifestyle come about for you? I mean, tell us just about your whole background. I know you have a business background. You're originally from Scotland. Tell us all about this. Yeah, I joke, I joke with people that um, I've been like a method actor for 36 years and this is my accent. I'm swinging from a, from a big from a big shop, but it's not come yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Scotland. Um, I'm 36 years old. I moved to Toronto, Canada originally to play rugby for a summer um, about 13 years ago. And I started in our business 11 years ago called Fervent Events. 
Canada's now home. Like I know Toronto more than Scotland now, although the accent would would tell you differently. Um, but I know I know Toronto much more. Um, I was in business for eleven years and then just essentially sold in July because what I was doing events marketing. I kind of wasn't really enjoying it anymore. And and that kind of went hand in hand with this personal development journey that I've been going through myself like the last couple of years. So essentially the last few years, I stopped drinking as much alcohol and um, prioritizing the family more, looking after my body more, getting back into fitness, which I'd kind of let go for like six or seven years since I stopped playing rugby, started to look at nutrition which is always going to be a struggle for me. Like I, I love the food that is not good for you. <laughs> like the stuff that tastes so good is, all, is often so bad, right? And, and the nutrition is always going to be a problem for me. But I went through this kind of journey for a couple of years. And um, the culmination of that was really selling my, my events marketing business in uh, July to, to start something completely new. As I say, I wasn't really happy for the last couple of years in that business. If a quick service restaurant came to me with, X amount of dollars, a marketing campaign, I would have grabbed it, um, but I wouldn't have felt good about the work. If a big tobacco company came, I would have grabbed it, but I wouldn't have felt good about the work. And that coincided with my own personal development. I kind of wanted to start a new business that would, would help people in their search for lifestyle development as well. And also continue me along my journey because I am by no means whatsoever um, the finished article. Like I'm, I'm not pretending to be Tony Robbins. Like I'm, I'm not Tony Robbins. I've got a long, long way to go. Yeah, and I mean, I, I was reading a little bit about your business that you had before you started Shape and Foster, and it sounds like it was like super successful. It got rated like top 500 businesses, but it just goes to show that when you're doing something that isn't fully satisfying, mm -hmm. you're missing certain aspects of your life. You're it sounded like you were missing some of your mental well-being and just like that work-life balance, your family time, your physical health. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, my, my previous business, uh, Fervent Events, we, we listed twice in the Growth 500, which is kind of like Canada's fastest uh, growing companies list and um, based off of like five-year revenues, so like Canada's little mini, mini Forbes list, shall we say. So we listed twice on that. And I loved, I loved the business at the start. I really, really loved it. And then the last couple of years, yeah, all of a sudden they started to take its toll. We, we got to a certain level. It wasn't enjoyable anymore. I wasn't working on the creative campaigns that I used to work on. I was kind of more like a glorified manager, really. It all really kind of like, the, the, the crazy thing is COVID. Like my my realization of wanting to, to, to start something new, it happened during COVID. We were in April. And COVID was now, I guess, like four or five weeks old. So, so my business hadn't billed a dollar for four or five weeks, which is a terrible situation to be in. But the funny thing is that I was starting to dread COVID ending because that would have meant I would have had to come back to this business that I'd built that I wasn't enjoying anymore. So it's a kind of really funny position to be in. Like on one hand, I, was, I had zero income. But on the other hand, I didn't. I would have really enjoyed that zero income to continue because it just meant that I wasn't. I wasn't having to go back to this job that I was no longer enjoying. So yeah, I mean, I think that the old kind of cliche, like like do a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Like I think that that really rings true, and that definitely stopped for me and um, personally about two years ago. Like like nine years into eleven year and an eleven year business, essentially that that stopped for me. And I mean, with all of that, like, that's so cool that it sparked during COVID. I think COVID has just been a huge learning curve for so many people on so many levels. And like you said, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. That's kind of how I'm starting to feel about podcasting. Just like talking to all these people and hearing like all these wonderful success stories and just people doing what they love and what happiness can be and having people reach their full potential is just it's so inspiring every day to hear about people like that but like while you were having that kind of discovery that you weren't necessarily reaching your full potential do you feel it was taking a toll on your family like were they seeing the effects of it um uh, interesting question I, I don't think that the work was really taking its effect on on my on my family life because I've always managed to 
like separate work work from family um apart from obviously the the odd, the odd times where like those horrible kind of words come out your your son's mouth where he's like daddy like get off your phone like i've, I've heard that before and, and and it's horrible it's like heartbreaking but i've always managed to like separate work from family pretty well my own kind of like journey the last couple of years personal development it actually like i mean i'm scottish like i I, I like alcohol. I, like, I used to. I used to drink quite a bit. <laughs> it's kind of part of the part of the upbringing in back in Scotland. Yes, yes, the whiskey, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, like anything, really. I mean, God, Scots are just big drinkers. And actually, moving to Canada, the Canadians like 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 beer as well. So, um, but I mean, I I kind of got to a stage where I wasn't drinking lots and lots, but every time I did drink, it was it was like a big one, right? And this is kind of what sparked my my journey of, of personal development and self growth about two years ago. I've played rugby my whole life. My son was three and a half years old at the time, and he was starting on a Sunday. He was going to be scheduled to start his first ever little mini rugby class, just like a little fun kind of like bunch of kids running around. Yeah, yeah, just introducing it to them, just right? Introducing it to them, like I've been looking forward to this for like three or four weeks. I was like, couldn't wait for it, like take my son to like his first rugby thing. It's going to be so, so much fun, all the rest of it. It was on a Sunday. The Saturday night, I had a big night and I got home like four or five o'clock in the morning, which is not is not good, right? Um, I woke up the next day and I wasn't drunk, but I mean, I was definitely not in a, not in a fit state to drive. Yes. I drove, like I drove, I drove my son. He, he went in the back car and, and we drove to rugby. And I had like an anxiety attack at the wheel, basically. And was that your first anxiety attack or do you have a history of those? I've only ever had one other before and that was like six or seven years ago. And it was also actually kind of alcohol related. It was like the day after. Um, so I've not got a long history of them, but I was basically had an anxiety attack that we all got to rugby. There was three or four other dads that were all taking the class and they were all fresh and they were all in good spirits. And I just had a kind of like an aha moment for me. It was like a kind of like, fuck this, like, what, why, why did I put my son in that position? Why am I doing that? Like, I've been looking forward to this for ages. And I basically stopped drinking after that. It was kind of like my, the start of my own journey. And then when I, when I gave up the alcohol and I drink now and then, I'm not teetotal, but I drink now and then now, but it's like every three or four months, right? It's not like a, it's not a very often occurrence. So that was, that was step one. And then step two was like, I'm going to get my, myself back in shape, start going to the gym again prioritizing family and then what i noticed with less alcohol and more more active um like fitness what i noticed was like my patience got a lot better and like my, my general happiness just improved so my family would definitely like they would have reaped the benefits of the of the 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 cutting back on the drinking and the starting fitness but i don't think that work would ever have really kind of got got in be got in the, in the in the family life but definitely alcohol and uh and 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 not being active yeah definitely because it affects your patience it affects your, your happiness your energy levels oh my gosh 100 percent. i mean now like i drink like one glass of wine and even the next day i'm just kind of like oh i just feel a little sleepy and tired yeah, like i notice sluggish. a difference yeah sluggish it's yeah. Like it takes such a toll on your body. And then like your whole mental well-being. I love that Shape and Foster brings in so many aspects of a person and their lifestyle because you could be working out every single day, lifting the weights and eating super, super healthy foods, like eating whole foods mm -hmm. every day. But you could also be drinking on the weekends and not having your full potential. Yeah. So like, I just think Shape and Foster is so great for pushing people to look at their lives as a whole. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. I mean, and that's what we're trying to do. So Shape and Foster, I mean, I should just kind of preface this and just sort of for your for your listeners, just let them know. It's essentially Shape and Foster is a, is a membership app that is also available in web browser that takes you on a 12-month journey of lifestyle development from six experts. And each of those experts um, I've contracted to curate a course specifically for Shape and Foster. So the six areas that, that I deem are important to a healthy heart and healthy mind, obviously there, there's way more, but the six that are available in this app is fitness, nutrition, mental wellness, a life coach, finance, and yoga. And if somebody becomes a member of Shape and Foster, what they basically get is they get new course material 
becoming available from each of the six experts every 30 days. So the courses are all consumed via video. So every 30 days, you have like one video to watch from each of the experts. So almost think of it as like a mini TED talk. There's a reason that TED talks are, are only 18 minutes, right? It's to keep your attention for the full time. And the videos in Shape and Foster are roughly the same time. They're all like 15 to 25 minutes. So basically two to three hours of your time um, every every month. And you should grow within these, these principles, fitness, nutrition, mental health, life coaching, finance, and yoga. And there's also like a 14 day free trial to, 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 to see if it's for you. The, the big th kind of thing about this, what I'm trying to achieve with Shape and Foster, the key term that it's really all built around is actionable insight. So, I mean, it's it's unlikely that you could learn from these six different pillars in a four week period of time. It just it's, it, it's not enough time. Oh, totally. It's like you can't you can't get a healthy lifestyle overnight. Exactly. And there's so many things out there that are like be be your best self in 28 days, and this isn't going to do that. This is this is about trying to form habits over the course of of 12 months. An actionable insight is because each of the videos, you're getting lessons from each expert with li just little things that you can insert into your daily life without too much bending bending around and, and having to like really caress this into your life. A lot of it is like easy sort of stuff that you can put in. An example of that, I don't know, I'm, I'm really interested, Sarah, we'll talk in a minute about your experiences with the app. I'm interested to hear what you've got to say, but if you watched month one, yeah, Sarah with uh, Tanya De Silva, the mental wellness expert, she has an amazing piece of advice. In month one of her videos, she says that every time you're, up, you're upset about something, you have to use what she calls the drill down method. So I'm watching this video myself, going through, going through like everybody else, and I've never heard of the drill down method. Like this is new information for me. And basically what that is, is you ask yourself five times when you're upset, why you're upset, but every time you have to try and drill down a little bit deeper. And the whole purpose is when you get to that fifth time of asking yourself, it's a totally different reason that you're really upset than that surface level the first time. You know, and maybe you're saying, oh, I'm upset because such and such at work didn't do this. But then you drill down, it's really because, you know what, I had a crap night's sleep, I should have gone to bed sooner. Oh yeah, it's like getting to the base layer of it. Like so many people have like, I think I've heard of like knee jerk reactions. Like your first reaction is to like get really mad or get really frustrated. But yeah, there's always a reason under it. So it's just like reminding a person to take that step back and think deeper. Exactly. And like, so this is, a, this is like in month one of mental wellness video. It's just a really simple thing that you learn, right? It's um, Tanya talks about it and it's actionable insight. So, so every single one of the videos in every principle, the fitness, nutrition, the mental wellness, you're going to learn lots and lots of stuff like this that you can incorporate into your daily life. And that's, that's the purpose. That's what we're all about. Yeah. And I love that it's a whole year and like launching it at the new year is a pretty awesome time to do yeah. that. Cause like, I think so many people, you set these new year goals and a lot of people fail at the goals within like the first month or so. Right. And like we were talking before, like how people fail at a podcast within the first few months because they don't stick with it. Mm -hmm. But having like Shape and Foster as your platform is going to be a way that people can stick at their goal. And like you said, it's super easy things to weave into your day. And like my question is like, are you kind of planning on people of all types of levels and walks of life joining this? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I don't have like a, an avatar of like a perfect member. There's no such thing. And that, and that's what is so cool about this. Like, I think that there's no adverts or algorithms inside Shape and Foster. Anyone who goes there is going there. They're, they're only going to get served the information that we're providing. And it is all in the nature of lifestyle development. So there's going to be lots of different people from lots of different walks of life that, that are just kind of wanting to, to try this out and try and like better themselves a little bit. And I think that's cool because nowadays in social media, your friendship circles, I mean, it's well documented that we kind of surround ourselves with this like group of people around us knowingly or unknowingly who are all like us, you know, they've got the same political beliefs, perhaps they've got the same leisure activities that they, they you're basically surrounded by three or 400 people in your life of some nature, all the same kind of 
beliefs and interests as you. Well, yeah, and it's like like you said, the algorithms. That's what the algorithms do to us. And that's what the algorithms like serve up, and then they they, they provide you as consistent like confirmational bias of you know like you, you Google something and you kind of find the answer that you're looking for. The kind of interesting thing about this, I think, is that the members are all they're, they're all coming from different places. I think I think you're going to be you're going to be you're going to be in a, in a community with people also that aren't necessarily like you. And I think that nowadays, I think that's, that there's value there as well, you know? Oh, there's a lot of value in being with people who aren't like you, especially as we enter into a new year and leave 2020 behind. I mean, yeah. surrounding yourself with people that aren't like you is going to widen your perspective on so many levels. I think so. So everyone will have the same common goal. They're wanting to learn from these experts, but where they're from and what their beliefs are will, will definitely differ massively. So you said there's six different areas. I know like one of them is nutrition, there's yoga, there's mental health, financial. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, I mean, essentially the, the six experts provide insight um, every single month. So finance, it's things like getting financially fit, managing debt, investing, home purchases over the course of, of 12 months. Fitness, obviously, there's new workouts that are uploaded every single month with modifications. Should somebody be new to fitness, they can. there's modifications inside the video. Nutrition, the videos are, are like small changes, um, like looking at your fridge staples or pantry staples, um, dealing with digestion, easy recipe videos. Mental health looks at things like a life balance audit, the mind-body connection, the why and how of your emotions. Life coaching looks at things like um, essence versus survival, working through self-sabotage. Yoga is a uh, live bi-weekly classes. And in addition to the live bi-weekly classes in yoga, every two weeks, we also um, interview one of the experts. So we have live interviews um, online with an expert every, every two weeks. If you miss one of the, the interviews, it's recorded. It's available in the app for you to go back and look at at any given time. Same with the yoga. If you miss it live, um, you can go in and, and watch the recording of it at any given time. So over the course of time, you're actually going to develop like a, a bank of information, like a, a Rolodex of, of stuff that you can go back to, which is kind of cool. And like when you say you're interviewing the experts, does that mean you're kind of diving into their own journey into Shape and Foster and their own struggles? No, so so not at all, actually. Good, good question. And um, just to clarify, no, we're, we're going to be taking questions from members. So and um, we're going to ask members ahead of time, like whoever's RSVP'd, do you have any questions for such and such an expert? And we're going to do like a Q and A to do with like their actual industry. So for example, the first um, interview is finance. Um, Shinobu Hinder, who is our financial expert. We've already got a few questions from members that have come in. Um, one of which is like, how do you unlearn um, your financial beliefs? And what's the best ways to teach children about finance? So we already have like some of these uh, questions that are coming in. So this is essentially going to be stuff that you can just ask an expert, get an answer for, and um, it's not actually part of the video coursework. Okay. Okay. I'm glad we clarified that because yeah, I was curious because I was looking at some of the experts um, like websites before we got on and it seems like they're all very like well versed in what they're doing and i noticed yeah. the nutritionist she it sounds like she struggled with a handful of food problems herself you're totally right so she originally basically got into nutrition because she had um a lot of issues with her skin and and she and her digestion she kind of wanted to get to the bottom of it and nothing was and that kind of started her own journey into nutrition it's interesting you're right a lot of the experts do have their own journeys um uh, Shinobu, the financial um, expert, her, her, her father is Kenyan, um, her mom's from Japan, so they're both immigrants to, to the US. And she learned a lot about finance because her mom and dad, she says, although it was quite intense, they, they involved her in all financial decisions when she was a kid. As a kid? As a kid. So she would learn about money and they didn't want, they wanted her to kind of not be in a position of weakness essentially when, when she was older and to have a full understanding, which is crazy. So it's interesting you say that because the areas of expertise of a lot of people are definitely, they're definitely defined by the life that they've led. Like the path has definitely led them to their expertise in many situations. But um, 
the experts that we have on those on those interviews, those Q and A's, they'll be strictly like kind of industry questions. Okay, yeah, because I mean, I thought it was really neat how each of the experts also had their own website and kind of has they all have their own business in a way. Yeah, they're all entrepreneurs. They're, I mean, they're contracted with Shape and Foster, but they all are business owners in, in their own right. So, I mean, Shape and Foster is, is, is one piece of business to them. Um, it, it's my whole business, but it's, it's, it's a percentage of their, of their, of their individual annual revenue, I'm sure, you know. And did you choose entrepreneurs on purpose for Shape and Foster? Um, definitely. It was definitely a, I mean, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, right? Like I, I think that, I think that solopreneurs like have just passion that, that a big box place can, can't provide. And I think that really comes across. So I definitely did want to go with smaller business owners um, and, and solopreneurs. But I interviewed a bunch of people. I mean, we interviewed six to seven different candidates per position. That was after going through like hundreds of, of kind of people online. And we interviewed like six to seven per, per position, hired them based on not just their expertise, but also like how personable they are, how well they come across on camera, how likable they are. I know that's an awful word to use, but... I mean, as an individual, I want to, I want to kind of like who I'm learning from. I don't want to be like, oh God, this guy's a pain in the ass. Like, you know. Well, sure. And like that kind of goes behind what Shape and Foster is. Like your whole like mental well-being. Like when you have a good mental well-being, you're probably going to come off as a likable person. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. And, and all of the, the experts that we have, they, they're all just very aligned with, with what we're doing, which is really cool. Um, I go back to Shinobu again, the financial expert. She used to work in corporate America. She's given over 500, um, 500 uh, presentations to high net worth individuals. And she had a kind of her own aha moment where she was like, these people don't need my financial advice. Like she, and, and she's like, I want to kind of, I want to start to educate people that are more in need of it and make more of a difference. Jazz is, is much the same. Um, Ty, the fitness trainer, is is much the same. Um, Christina Rowland became a life coach after um, the passing of, of her mum and uh, having a kind of moment where she wasn't enjoying her corporate her corporate job and she and she went for a second career. So there's definitely an enjoyment factor and like a, a willingness to to educate people that that is a part of all of these professionals' individual individual uh, entrepreneur journeys. Absolutely. And like when you're an entrepreneur, like you've kind of like lived your own story to tell. And I think that's so important in something like Shape and Foster because like seeing people who are living a healthy lifestyle is one thing, but to know the background behind that person makes it so much more meaningful because it it shows and proves that not everybody was just born into a healthy life. Not mm -hmm. everybody was just born being like emotionally stable, it, it takes challenges to get there. And people have challenges every day. Nobody's perfect. Like you said, you you still like unhealthy food. Yeah, uh, I, I love unhealthy food. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your favorite unhealthy food? Oh, um, probably like a, a, a shawarma, pizza, wings, anything. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Yes, pizza. But that's, something, pizza. that's something I'm going to work on myself. 2021 is the year that I'm really going to like focus on my nutrition. So through Jazz Stupak, the nutritionist in Shaden Foster, I am legitimately going to like follow every, try and follow every single piece of information that she provides. And I'm interested to see where that takes me next year. That's going to be my, my focus for the year, I think. Yeah. So I'm curious, where did Shape and Foster, that name, uh -huh. how did that come about? Um, I really wanted the uh, two, two words that kind of like integrate quite well and kind of explain each other. So I was, I was always looking for, for a company, a company name that, that had two words. And yeah, I mean, look, there, there's not any science behind it. It's, it's a lot of like put some words together, see if they fit and um, look at cinnamons for, for each of the words and um, mix and match it some more. And then finally get something that kind of fixes. Right. Originally I was, I was looking at a name called huddle and no, huddle was in like to huddle together and know as in knowledge and I was kind of stuck on that for a while and then I, and then I got to shape and foster and as soon as I got it like I just loved it because I think it really it really represents what what we're trying to do and, and what the company's all about 
Well, right, right. It it just goes back to the whole mission of looking at the person, their whole lifestyle, like fostering a better lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. It's not just about building your muscles or bodybuilding. No, and... no, not not at all, not at all. And I think that kind of to that point, um, like as you kind of as you describe and key in on like one of the practices, like being fitness, something that that I think is going to be interesting is that. I think I think a real a real value here is that people are going to get six experts and they're not going to even realize or or think that they're going to use all of the experts. I think that's awesome. I think there's going to be people that will come for maybe two things. So maybe somebody will be like, "I'm interested in fitness and I'm interested in a life coach," but then they're going to they're going to get so much more from the financial expert or the mental wellness or you know what I mean. So. I think people are going to come for one thing and there are two or three things and they're going to leave with, with so much more like insight yes. because you have, you have the access to the videos. So why not watch them all? Right. And my, my wife is like case in point. My wife actually said to me, and this sounds like a kind of cliche, like, Oh, here's a story. Here's an anecdote that he's made up. This is the actual truth. <laughs> God's honest truth. Um, my wife the other night was like, I did the um, financial month one today. She was like, that was the one video that I was not enthusiastic about. I'm not really interested with finance, but she thought, but she took so much from it. And she thought that Shinobu delivered it in a real holistic sort of way. And it wasn't just kind of like stuffy sort of finance. So I think people are going to really learn like more than they even are kind of coming in for, which is really cool. Well, yeah. And I like that, especially with finance, when you're talking finance, like I, I can get really lost in like the really deep details of finance too. So like, if a person who isn't like in that mindset necessarily like listening to like this person talk about finance, it sounds like it could be a helpful thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like when you open the door to one thing, you don't know where life is going to lead you. So I agree. I agree. I'm interested now, Sarah, t tell me about your experiences with, with the app. Well, you've been inside it for like a few weeks. How have you found it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's like really easy to navigate around, but I haven't necessarily been able to watch a lot of the videos because it sounds like it looks like you guys are advertising that they're going to be launching in mm -hmm. January. Like I saw there's going to be like yoga, like the first couple weeks of January. Like Right. Yeah. So so the videos, so the way that works essentially, um, the, the, the program videos, they, they unlock every 30 days. So, so you can only see month one of, of every single experience videos right now. And then in 30 days after you become a member, you, you get access to month two, and then 30 days later, month three. So if you see a lot of content right now, you can't click on it because it, it, it's timed to unlock every 30 days, but you, you should have access to it to all of the month ones of each of the, the experts. Yeah. And I was able to like, um, look at like, there's, um, questions people were writing like i think today someone wrote what's your word that would sum yeah. up the year of 2020 mm -hmm. so just kind of yeah. like building that community is something that i find really awesome because i i seek community and i like connecting with people and i mean like you said this is a community of all types of people so totally. it's just getting people on one platform connecting with and like you guys kind of emphasize that there's no advertisements because they're yeah. paying to use this. So yeah, exactly. No ads, no algorithms. Right. So why would someone pay for this versus just like, you know, using a YouTube video? What benefits will they get from that? Totally. Good, good question. Um, could somebody go out there and hypothetically source all of the information? I mean, we, we have 110 videos that are going to be um, available throughout the course of your 12 months. So could somebody go out and, and, and source all of these different videos and, and find out? Of course they could. I'm sure, I'm sure they could. I'm sure that this information they could go and find from other people. They are uniquely curated for Shape and Foster, but it, it's all in the one place. You have everything in the one place. You have all these programs that are specifically curated and timed over the course of 12 months. And then the big value prop is, is price. I mean, if you were to go to these six experts individually, you're looking at over $10,000 in, in total spend for the courses that, that they are providing Shape and Foster. Whereas the cost per year in uh, USD is $299 for Shape and Foster or $29.99 a month. So you're looking at massive savings. And of course, you're then also being part of a community.
So is there any like deals you guys are running as the new year does come? Is there any like major deals if someone were to sign up? Yeah, so January and February, um, it's $299 USD. That, that's founder member pricing for the year. And on March the 1st, it becomes $399. So it's $100 cheaper for the first two months of the year, January and February. Okay. And it looks like there was already a handful of people on the platform as I was kind of playing around with it. Are those members that have already signed up? So we did um, a very, very, very small soft launch just to get a few members in and um, paid members just to kind of see how they navigated and um, get their feedback. So we have some paid members in and then and then half of the half of them are, are actually people like yourself, uh, podcasters that are going to have a look around and and uh, get, give some context for, for, for a conversation. So so some are on like kind of free plans, so to speak, right now, like media, but the other, the other half are, are on paid plans from a soft launch. Okay. And as far as like the people that have already paid for the plan from the soft launch, have you gotten feedback uh -huh. from them yet about how it's like helped change their lifestyle yet? Or is it too soon? <laughs> it's too, it's only the soft launch at the time of our conversation right now, the soft launch was only about a week and a half ago. So it's too soon to, if any of them said I'd changed their life, I'd, I'd be questioning it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. However, what I can attest to is the um, activity. What has been really, really awesome to see and really pleasing is um, members are signing in daily. Members sign in daily, and if not daily, like every other day. And a lot of the videos that we provide are being consumed. So that is that is pretty awesome. Um, it's great to see if, if, if there wasn't sign-ins, if members were not signing in and like they were being inactive for a whole week, then I would be worried. Um, but but activity is great, engagement is great. People are saying in every day or every other day. So and they're watching videos and they're they're doing a poll or contributing a little bit of a question. I've been really pleased with like how it started. It's been awesome. Right, like there's something kind of pulling people back and yeah, exactly keeping that curiosity. Totally, man. They, they feel part of it. It's pretty cool and. Uh, it's it's really exciting. It's exciting to see. You know, I go in the app and I see like the wee bit at the bottom that says new, new activity and like I refresh the app and I see someone's posted a question or poll results are in or I don't know, whatever it may be or, or a new member's joined. It's it's pretty cool. Like it's uh, it, it's really starting to to take its course and um, I think 2021 is is the year to to launch this well yeah and especially going back to how you kind of started this whole thing in the middle of covid i think covid is just like it's just turned so many people's lives upside down and the mental well-being of so many people in the world right now is just people are struggling and community is where people are finding that positivity that we need in our everyday lives so i mean entering a new year is when people are going to be striving to be their best totally yeah I, I i completely agree i mean it's there's definitely i mean january just really worked for for a launch for, for myself um but the timing as far as like that month of the year is a kind of like new new year new me sort of thing i mean obviously it worked very well but the the cold hard facts sort of of it are the reason i started january is because that is the 31st of december is when i'm I'm no longer required to to help with the company that I've just sold to. That that was actually why why first of January became. The oh, you're like still tied with them. Yeah, just on a on a um like a consultancy role. Uh, basically, I sold a business, and I, I had to stay involved for six months just to to ensure handover was was all properly dealt with, and, and it has been. And as it stands right now, I mean, I'm I'm basically not not involved at all. I, I have the odd email now and then, but everything, everything was handed over properly in about two or three months because it was COVID and there was no actual actual work to do, that there was no events or marketing to actually execute on. So I spent I spent July and August just just handing over the business and and I've been kind of sitting working on Shape and Foster ever since. But yeah, I want I want I want to have five days a week that I can properly do it with it moving forward in January the 1st. So December the 31st is when my contract ends with the, the company I sold to. And as far as like the whole app development, was that you developing the app or did you guys have someone hired on to design? We used a company called Mighty Networks. So they're just, they, they create apps that have this uh, community built into them. 
for, for a number of different people and you can look them up, Mighty Networks, really cool, really tr uh, trusted software and software that is glitch free. I mean, I didn't want to start a new business and, and completely develop a, a new, the shell of an app myself, because the chances are that there would be bugs because technology slaps you in the face whenever it can, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, definitely. So we went with that. We went with a company, we hired a company that have done it before and they've, they've built similar models. Awesome. And I'm curious, like, since it's like a whole lifestyle thing, is there going to be any part of like encouraging people to get outdoors? Cause like, I mean, we're, we're a hiking podcast. We're all about the outdoors and the benefits that the outdoors has on people's physical and mental well being. Is Holy. that going to be any part of Shape and Foster? Um, I think that, that where that really just comes in is, is in conversation um, as, as a, a, in the fitness topic, as um, the community grows, I, I anticipate more people sharing more posts and more stories of, of what they are doing to hit, to assess the lifestyle. So I think that will come more from member stories. Should, should there be members that, that have gone hiking or gone on trails and they choose to, to post photos and share what they've done, which is awesome. Yeah. One question I have about that is I did see on the platform that like, since it's like a paid membership, you guys don't want people promoting like their businesses or like themselves on there. So like if somebody were to write like a blog post about an awesome trip they've been on, would that be something you would allow on the platform? Um, I mean, as long as it's like authentic and it's not, I mean, if somebody is like writing something about their experience and sharing that where they went and they're not in any way receiving like monetary value from that share or post, then of course that's completely fine. Um, but I think it has to just, it really has to be authentic. So, I mean, 99.9% .9 of things that get posted, I'm, I'm sure that they'll be completely legit and, and that 0.1% will maybe have to take down. But I mean, that's a, that's a problem that I look forward to dealing with because that'll mean we've got tons and tons of posts every day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I know that's just like, just hearing stories and reading about other people's journeys and the positivity that they've had in the outdoors, especially because I mean, I'm a huge advocate for that, but just anyone's experience on any level, I just think hearing their personal stories and their personal challenges with that is where people can really grow and learn and be motivated. I, I agree. And then, um, I mean, I hope that through the course of it as well, people are willing to, to be vulnerable and share some of their areas of growth because it is going to be a safe community, right? You, you might not be willing in a Facebook group, for example, to share, I was having a kind of, I've been having a, a bad week and I used Tanya De Silva's uh, month three video to kind of get me back on the right track and so on and so on. You might not share that in a Facebook group. Um, I, I think that in Shape and Foster, there'll be an openness from all members that there's not really any such thing as a, as a bad share. You know, you, you can be vulnerable if necessary. And at, at the same time, someone like me, um, who's not great in the kitchen and is looking forward to starting to cook and, and, uh, and, and cook some nice, like nutritious sort of meals. I'm going to be sharing posts on some of these like food pics. Like here, here's one of Jazz's videos. Like she, she does like a vegan curry in month one. I'm going to cook that vegan curry at some point in the next couple of weeks, give it a try. And I'll share that post with everyone and let them know how, how I got on. <laughs> yeah, sure. And that's, and that's me being vulnerable because cooking is not one of my fortes. So it's all about developing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Share the successes and the failures and totally. except, yeah, like the word failure isn't necessarily even a good word either. It's just, it's kind of about growth from what I've learned. Totally. It is, it is, it is about growth. Um, I don't think, I don't think that there's really any such thing as like failing it, at trying to, to do a little bit better, you know? Right, right. Because when you say fail, that can put such a negative aspect on the whole outline of it. Yeah, you're totally right. And like everything with like mental wellness and like self-development and, and growth. And we have come like, we've come a long way in the last 10 years, like 20 years, we've come a long way. Like, I mean, the, the advice when we were kids and we are still young, but the advice, the advice when we were kids would have been like, suck it up. You know, oh, I've, I've had a bad day. Like, oh, suck it up, you know? Like, suck it up is no longer acceptable, like, advice. Like, no one would no one would say that sort of thing anymore. It's all about everyone's now willing to listen. 
like um, the conversation around like trying to better yourself and mental wellness the conversation has evolved so much and the openness around doing better has evolved so much and then um, I, I think that shape and foster will really be be like that in, in the community yeah you're definitely right like the stigma around the whole mental health and wanting to do better has gotten it's improved. I still think there is some stigma around mental well-being, but hopefully places like this, like like you said, it gives people a safe place to connect. And my other question is like, are those six experts going to be in communication with anyone who needs it? Like one-on-one -on -one conversation? So no, not one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's a question I have had from somebody else. Another member asked if they're going to get a one -on any one-on-one -on -one time with the life coach. Unfortunately, to, to make this, I mean, this is also going to be a business, right? Like in the end of the day, it's a community, 100%, I'm a community founder. But if it's not a success and and like, like Callum's got to go and get another job, right? So there has to be, there does have to be some revenue making, some, a revenue model to it. To scale this thing in an ideal world and get to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 members, it's not possible to offer the expert services one-on-one. -on -one. To that many people it's just not possible so what you can do is have access to them through t written text so you can you can ask them a question on the platform and they'll respond there's a few questions asked today and, and the experts get back to them or you can write down a question and attend at the live q a's and actually have it's not private it's not private one-on-one -on -one, but it's um it's an opportunity for a more unique question to be asked spe specific to your needs yeah and i mean that's kind of just going back to the whole great mental well-being of shape and foster because i mean at the end of the day you said this is a business and it does you want it to make money but like yeah if someone's doing one-on-one -on -one, i mean you hear about those people who are like kind of living like doing their job 24 7 around the clock around the clock so by kind of giving your employees that boundary it kind of helps with that too yeah exactly and it's, and it's just to, to properly scale it i mean there's just not really going to be that that opportunity but i mean maybe some people i mean the hope is that all of all of what you need is here and within the app you go through the 12 months of courses you really will grow from each of the end of each of the expert programs but if you do need like additional one-on-one, -on -one, you can always go to one of the experts directly. At least you've, at that point, you've you've got a connection with them. You know you like them, and um, you know what they're all about. You can always go to them directly if necessary. But but it would not be part of the of the annual fee. Okay, okay. And so if people were kind of curious and thinking about signing up, where could they go to maybe learn more information? So as I said, we are everything fourteen day free trial. Um, so. I am not wanting people to to sign up and find out they don't like it. Like the whole purpose is try before you buy. Like I'm a massive advocate of that. So if anyone goes to www.shapeandfoster.com, you can get your 14 day trial. And then if it's for you, then you continue beyond the 14 days. And if it's not, then, then you simply opt out before your 14 days are up. Of the members that have come in from the soft launch, you should be warned, not one person has backed out yet. So we have, a, we have a pretty good success rate. It's a very, very, very small sample pool, but everyone that's come in is so far, it likes what they see. So that's that's pretty pleasing. But www.shapeandfoster.com and it's $299 per year or a monthly plan is $29.99. The annual plan, you essentially get 12 months for the price of 10. Awesome. And do you have like a hope as to how many people are going to sign up in the next year? Do you guys have like, I mean, that's hard to pre predict since you're, since you're yeah, new, but. To it, it's hard. It's like plucking numbers from the sky. It's really hard to predict, but I mean, I, I'm kind of hoping that I, we get like 500 to, to 700 members by the end of 2021. Um, that would be a really active community. And it would also, it would also kind of the math, the maths at that stage as far as a business goes, it would start to make sense. But I mean, you, you just, you never know. I mean, it could, I think it honestly has the potential to, to be thousands. I think it has the potential to be thousands of members. Everyone who's in the community is enjoying it. And I think that's the, the best kind of testament that, that we can currently, at this early stage that we can, that we can currently say. 
Right, right. And if it became like thousands of members, would you look into like bringing more people on, like more experts, or would you still just keep it that small number of experts? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. So as it stands right now, it, it would just be the six experts for for year one. However, in year two, I mean, this is this is the beauty of it. I, I can ask, like, come July or August, I'll be able to ask the community because right now it's only actually set up for, for a one year plan, right? It's a one year journey. So come the middle of 2021, I'm going to ask the community, like, what do you guys want? What would you feel more benefit from? Do you want to learn from six or seven or eight completely different industries, completely different professionals and, and keep this whole journey of like all these different industry knowledge, like keep that going? Or would you like a, a year or two from your current six experts and a few new experts? So there'll be lots of options there. Um, and the coolest thing is, as I say, like the, the community will, will decide that. Yeah, just got to kind of see where it see where it unfolds. Exactly. See where it goes. Yeah, that's what the first year is about when you're trying things new. I mean, that's exactly what we've been doing with this podcast, seeing where it goes. Yeah. We started it like a year and a half ago, but you just keep going and, and it just kind of, it keeps you curious. <laughs> totally. That's it. Keep, keeps you curious. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, is there anything else we haven't covered about Shape and Foster? Not at all. I think this has been awesome. I, I've appreciated the opportunity to, to talk with you about it. Um, and I've really appreciated you being in the community. I hope that as an individual, you can really um, get benefit yourself, you know, watch some of the videos and um, learn from some of the experts, hopefully over the next year. Um, hope, maybe we touch base in a year's time and you tell me what expert you liked the most and, and where the benefit was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I know I could learn from finances. I mean, just there's all kinds of things. The nutrition, that curry sounded good. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the month one, the vegan curry. And it's a really easy show and tell 20 minute video. I mean, as I say, I'm not, I'm not great in the, I'm not great in the kitchen. Um, and I had to watch the video and I was like, I could do that. So, so I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to make something that I know is good for me and it's healthy and it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It just like comes out in little bits and pieces, like month by month. You said it's not overwhelming. Exactly. Well, thank you for coming on today, Callum. Thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate it. And um, Rory seems like he, he nodded off, did he? Yes, he did. Uh, my husband got home and grabbed him because he was he was hey. getting a little bit fussy. But for the most part, like he was, like I said, he was pretty good. He was great. No, no, yeah, no, no tears. He was awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate it. We've loved doing this podcasting journey. We love bringing awesome guests on. We love seeing that people are listening. And we're really, really grateful that this is hopefully inspiring other people to get outdoors. Yeah, and as part of our mission at Hiking Through Life, we really want to help support others in continuing their journey or starting their journey into the outdoors. So as part of that, we have plans for future episodes to address some listener feedback. So if you have questions about backpacking, hiking, adventuring outdoors, let us know. Email hikingthroughlife at gmail.com and submit us your question or topic and we'll possibly address it in a future episode. You've been listening to the Hiking Through Life podcast. Peace, love, and hike through life.